today's tutorial we're going to be going ahead and creating a loading screen inside of roblox studio to start off let's go right over here to starter gy click on the plus icon to the right of starter gy and we're going to be inserting a screen gy this screen gy we're going to rename to loading screen with a capital s and a capital l and inside of here, we're going to turn on ignore GY inset, and I'm going to show you why we do that. To explain why we do that, let's go ahead, click on the plus icon to the right of our loading screen GY, and let's insert a frame. And right now, this frame is on the very top left corner of our screen. But if we were to go ahead and click on play, you'll notice that the frame gets pushed down by Roblox's UI that they create up here, like the menu, the chat, and whatever this box right here is, which is... Well, supposedly all the other options that you can click, but you can see it pushes down our frame. And that's a problem because for our loading screen, we want to take up the entire screen. So what we need to do is just click on ignore GUI inset, which if you see when we go ahead and play the game one more time, it will actually be right where we put it at. And we don't have to worry about it being shoved around by all the other UI. Now let's go ahead, use our frame. I'm going to change the background color to a little bit of a darker color, not necessarily entirely black, but not a very light gray either. Sort of like a very darkish gray. I think works fine. And you can feel free to customize this however you would like to. It doesn't really matter the color, the transparency, whatever. All that really matters is the size is 1, 0, 1, 0. And this is going to take up our entire screen. From there, we can rename this frame over to holder because it's going to be the holder for all of our other GUI. And inside of here, let's go ahead, insert a frame. And this frame, let's go ahead and rename this to bar frame because it's going to be the frame that will hold our bar. I'm going to change the anchor point to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and the position will be 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.5, 0. This is going to position our bar here right in the very middle. And I'm also going to add probably 5, 5 onto the Y position right here just to build it a little bit lower than where it was. From there, for the size, I'm personally going to be doing 0.4 on the X axis, which is left and right, and then comma 0, comma 0 0.06, and then comma 0. I think this looks pretty good for a bar for me. However, you can customize this however you would like to. From there, inside of here, I'm going to be adding in a UI stroke, which will add a little darker outline around our frame right here. And I'm also going to be adding in a UI corner, which if you don't know, will add this little edge to our UI here. So it's not just so square and it actually has a little bit of a corner bevel, you could say. And the corner radius inside of here, I'm going to set to 0 0.15 and then comma zero. And that looks pretty good to me. Now let's click on the plus icon inside of our bar frame. We're going to add in a brand new frame. And this frame, we don't need to mess around with the anchor point or the position or anything like that, but we need to change the size to one comma zero comma one comma zero so that takes up the entirety of our frame that it was inside of and i'm also going to change the background color to a green color this is going to be the loading bar as it goes across so you can make this whatever color you would like to for me personally i'm going to put it at green and i'm personally going to put it about 80 percent done which is probably about right here so from there we can rename this frame to bar because it is inside of our bar frame and it's the loading bar that we're going to be tweening later on and inside of our bar frame once again i'm also going to click on the plus icon and insert a text label this text label i'm going to set the background transparency to one the anchor point will be 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 the position is going to be 0 0.5 comma 0 comma 0 0.5 comma 0 and the size is going to be about 0 0.1 comma 0 comma 0 0.8 comma 0 and this is just position it pretty much in the middle and resize it down to a reasonable size for our text i'm going to make this text scaled set to true and then the font face i'm going to change to fredoka one i'm also going to change the text color over to white and i'll duplicate the ui stroke from the bar frame and put it inside of the text label here i'm also going to change the thickness of that ui stroke down to three so it's not so big around our text and i'm also going to change the text to something like 80 percent from there i'm going to rename this text label over to percentage because this is going to be the percentage of our bar that's complete. And I'm also going to duplicate this percentage. This part is completely optional. Well, I guess the whole tutorial is optional, but this up here is going to determine how many assets have been loaded so far. So I'm just going to write assets loaded colon and something like zero out of 100. 
Now we may need to resize this as well, but that's pretty easy to do. So we can go ahead and do that. And you'll see we have this many assets loaded. From there, we can go ahead and rename this one to assets. And this is really all that we need for our loading screen. If you would like to go ahead and insert a logo, you can definitely do that. Add an image up here or maybe some more text. You can even add a tip down here if you'd like to, which we can go ahead and do actually. So I'm going to duplicate this assets text label right here and then move it over into my holder right here. And then we simply need to go ahead and we can move it downwards right here. It may be really, really big, but that's all right. With a little bit of resizing, we can change the size downwards. And this will be something like, don't forget, to like the game something simple like that you can put it something like this or i'm gonna do subscribe to rusty silly bands so that way you guys know that once again if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe to the channel helps out a ton and it's completely free but otherwise we're gonna get right into scripting if you would like to join i suppose we should also rename this assets text label to tip but other than that we can go ahead and get scripting so i'm gonna go ahead click on our loading screen right here let's click on the plus icon and then insert a local script this script let's go ahead and rename to manager because is our loading screen manager it doesn't really matter whatever we name it but it helps to have a specific name for it i'm gonna start up here at the top of our script getting some services i'm going to start up here just by getting local content provider service which is going to be equal to game get service content provider like this now if you don't know what content provider service is it's simply a service that we use to go ahead and preload assets for a specific time it also does a few other things but the main thing we use it for is preloading assets which is perfect for loading screens because we want to make sure the whole game is loaded before the player actually goes ahead and plays the game so let's go ahead and drop down a few more lines and then get a comment for our variables right here these comments are completely optional but i personally do them just to keep the code nice and organized and i think it's personally easier to read however they are optional from there let's go ahead and get our holder which is going to be equal to script.parent.holder. This is the holder frame that we made earlier, sort of the background of our loading screen. And now here's where we're going to get a variable that's going to determine what we want to load for your game. We're going to go ahead and call this variable assets. And this is going to be equal to game dot workspace get descendants and it's going to hold them here inside of an array that will get returned when we use get descendants i'm personally going to be using game get descendants which is going to return an array full of all of the objects inside of our game this will be everything inside of our GUI, everything inside of server script service replicated storage every single object inside of your game that we want to load in before the player goes ahead and joins the game however this is technically unnecessary for smaller games that don't really need all too much to load so if you want to you can definitely just do game.workspace get descendants it really doesn't matter all too much let's go ahead and drop down and let's create another comment for our functions right here i'm also going to zoom in for you guys a bit and first off we need to say game dot replicated first and we're going to remove the default loading screen. What this is going to do is going to basically make it so that way it doesn't take so long to join to the game with the default loading screen that Roblox has. You might not notice much of a change using this inside of Roblox Studio, but inside of your actual game, it's going to make a big difference simply because we don't actually have that default loading screen inside of Roblox Studio, as far as I'm concerned. Down here, though, we're going to create a brand new local function that we can go ahead and use to start our loading screen and inside of here we're going to create a for loop so for i will be equal to one comma and then we're going to loop through the number of assets that we have right here whenever we put a hashtag or a pound sign before a certain object like this inside of roblox studio typically an array or a table then it's going to display the number of every single object that is inside of that array or table or whatever the object is so we're going to choose one as the starting point for our index inside of this for loop and then the number of assets is going to be the end point so so however many assets
limits there are in our game, that's how many times this loop is going to run. So for i equals to one comma, and then the number of assets, we're going to go ahead and do this. So first off, we're just going to say our content provider service, we're going to go ahead and preload async, which is going to pretty much preload the asset that we put inside of here. And you'll see right here, we need to go ahead and put this inside of squiggly brackets or braces. And what we want to do is put our asset inside of here. So we're going to say assets square brackets i. So what this is going to do is going to find the asset that i is correlated to, which in this case i is equal to one. So it's going to find the first asset and then loop over to the next one and so on and so forth. Let's also go ahead and say holder dot bar frame dot assets dot text is going to be equal to quotation marks and this will be assets loaded colon space we're going to be doing something called string concatenation which if you're unaware it's simply concatenating two different strings together pretty much and sometimes even using numbers and other values like that as well and how we do it inside of roblox studio is we go ahead and use two dots like this and then the thing that we want to go ahead and concatenate our string with which is pretty much just conjoining them together so we're going to say assets loaded and this will be i, which will be pretty much the number of assets. And then dot dot, so we're concatenating another string. And this will be a slash right here. And we're going to say dot dot. And then we can put the number of assets right here, which is going to pretty much say assets loaded one out of however many assets there are. And that's going to go to the next one. It's going to say two out of however many assets there are. And it's gonna do that for each and every single time that this one loops, which is pretty cool. Let's also go ahead and say holder dot bar frame dot percentage dot text will be equal to, this might get a little complicated, we're gonna say math dot floor, which returns the largest integer smaller than or equal to X, which is basically complicated terms for it's going to round down to a certain number. And we're gonna say I divided by the number of assets and then times 100. So we take I and we divide it by the total amount of assets inside of our game. Let's say it'll be like 1800 or some crazy number like that, but it's going to be a very specific number that we're going to then times by 100 to get the percentage. And then we're also gonna be using more string concatenation at the end here, just to put a percent sign at the end of our text. And then we're going to say holder dot bar frame dot bar tween size and this will be udem2 dot from scale which if we just did udem2 dot new you'll see that we have to provide the offset and the scale which will be that same like 0 0.5 comma 0 comma 0 0.5 comma 0 from earlier however if we do udem2 dot from scale we only have to provide the scale value, so we can just say 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 like this, and it's much simpler, much cleaner, much better looking in my opinion, so we're going to be using from a scale. I suppose it might actually be better just to put this inside of a variable, so we're going to go ahead and cut this. Let's put this inside of a variable, such as the percentage will be equal to this, and then we can just put percentage right here. And then inside of our udem2 dot from scale right here, we're going to say percentage. We're going to divide it by 100 this time to get the exact scale that we're going to be using because we can't just have like 80 inside of here, 90 inside of here, whatever it's going to be because Roblox's scale goes from 0 to 1, not 0 to 100. So we just want to divide that by 100 so that way it'll be like 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.30 stuff like that instead of 30 40 50 because that'd be way too large if that makes sense and then we can just simply put one on the y-axis so that way it's all the way up on the top and bottom and that's really all that we need to do or all that we should do so that's all that we really need to go ahead and do however if you would like to let's go ahead put a comma after our udem2 and we can also put in some tween information you could say this is stuff like enum.easing direction dot in out i'm personally gonna be doing out but you can do in out in or out i'm also gonna do enum dot easing style dot quad i personally like quad which is speed determined by quadratic interpolation however there are all sorts of different easing styles you can choose like linear elastic exponential all sorts of different things once again i'm gonna go with quad and then for the time i'm gonna put this at about 0 0.1 now once our assets are done being loaded i'm just gonna say wait one that's just gonna wait one second and then we can go ahead and say our holder 
colon tween position and this will be udem2 dot from scale once again we're going to say 0 0.5 so that way it's still in the middle and then on the y-axis we're going to do like negative 1.5 so that way it's taken out of our site going upwards and then once again with this one as well you can go ahead and add some of those tween information settings that i was talking about earlier such as the enum.easing direction i'm first going to do out one more time and then enum.easing style is going to be probably quad again and the time, I'm going to set this to be probably one second. And I believe that's actually all that we're going to go ahead and need to do for our loading screen script. So let's go ahead, drop down a few lines, and we can just go ahead and call this start function. Let's go ahead and press play, and then we can test it out. So joining the game is going to say all of our assets that are being loaded. All right, so there are a few things going on in here that I didn't really like, and I think it's because I forgot to set the anchor point of our holder frame. So I'm going to change the anchor point to 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5. I'm going to change the position to 0 0.5 comma 0 comma 0 0.5 comma 0. Let's go ahead and click on play this time and it should be a little bit better on the ending there. So that ending did look a little bit better than beforehand. Beforehand, it was kind of going off in this direction, which was unfortunate. However, it still is looking a little bit weird on the bar here, how it's only stopping like right there. So let's go into our manager scripts that we have inside of our loading screen GUI. And all we really need to do is inside of our tween size thing right here, we just need to go down and then after our time right here in the tween information, we need to put a comma and then set override to true. Because what's happening is 0 0.1 seconds is too long of a time before it can go ahead and start the next asset in the for loop. So what it does is it doesn't wait for the tween to finish right here. Instead, it just goes right over to the next asset, which is great and all. But that means that the tween isn't completing before it's starting to tween again. And that becomes a problem because it's just creating all sorts of these different tweens before they can finish. So it's never actually reaching the end. It gets close, but not far enough. So when we put override to true it's simply going to override the already in progress tween and this is going to fix our issue now if we go ahead and play the game you will notice that it'll get to 100 right here and that is perfect now by the way if you would like to go ahead take your bar you can scale it all the way down over here you can also change the text from here to 0% and that way it will look perfect in, when you go ahead and play the game inside of your game just like this. Anyways, that's how you can create a very simple loading screen inside of Roblox Studio. If you enjoyed this tutorial just as much as I did, please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye!